Hello, my beautiful. Yellow bone, red bone, butter pecan, caramel, butterscotch, toffee, mocha, chocolate, cocoa, exoticals. Welcome to the Pretty Girl Club. Welcome to the Exoticals United Community. If you are new here, welcome. Here in the Exoticals United Community, we support men and women from the following people groups multiracials, biracials, multi generationally mixed, and light skinned golden people. Hi Exoticals, welcome to the Dark Femininity series. Um, this video is off script, so it's going to be a little bit rambly, but today I want to talk about one of the dark sides of femininity. Um, so I'm going to talk about the psychology of a pretty woman and the top traumas that a pretty girl may face. So number one, betrayal trauma. Uh, as a pretty girl, you already know that you're going to deal with a lot of jealous people. So oftentimes I've noticed that a lot of pretty women have lots of backstabbing friends in their lives or maybe some of their own family members backstabbed them. Um, for those of you who are in my Discord, I've noticed that a lot of you guys have told me almost like the same story over and over. Almost everywhere I turn, there's some sort of pretty girl that is being betrayed by someone who is jealous of her. Another trauma that I've noticed that a lot of pretty women face in particular is sexual trauma. I don't think I've met not one girl in general who has not ever been sexually harassed or sexually assaulted, um, but I've noticed that this issue seems to be even bigger for the girls who are considered sexually desirable. So let's say you're a pretty girl and you happen to be from the ghetto or like some sort of area where there are a lot of predatory men. It doesn't have to be the ghetto, but it could be maybe some sort of twisted church organization or some sort of cult-like background. I've noticed that a lot of pretty women, they go through uh, sexual trauma. So that means men doing the R word to you or touching you when you don't want to be touched, especially when you're a young girl. Another trauma that I've noticed that a lot of pretty women face is aesthetic trauma. Uh, so this is a terminology that I just made up because I couldn't think of any other term to call it. So aesthetic trauma is defined as when people call out anything about you that doesn't fit their beauty standard. So let's say you're very beautiful and you're getting a lot of attention from men. I've seen a lot of unambiguous women do this to mixed race women. They will say, oh, well, you know, your hair is still nappy or, oh, your nose is big or, oh, look at Ella Mai, like she's not even as pretty as these other girls who are more white looking than her. So I've noticed that anytime you are considered conventionally attractive, jealous people will call out anything about your physical features that they can use against you. So they will call out any of your physical flaws or let's say you have a pimple, they are more likely to call it out and it's all rooted in the fact that they are jealous and they just wanna take you down a notch. It's their way of humbling you. So let's say you're really beautiful and you happen to be overweight. People will call out that you're overweight, but have you noticed how no one cares if the ugly girl is overweight? No one cares if the mediocre girl has a pimple. But as soon as the pretty girl has one pimple or she gains five pounds or her hair starts breaking off, everybody starts calling it out. People start making fun of it. And that is what I would call aesthetic trauma. So when you are um, aesthetically pleasing and you are far above average when it comes to looks, people will go out of their way to try to knock you down. Another trauma that I've noticed that a lot of pretty women face is projection trauma. So this is when people project their stereotypes onto you. So uh, people that give you like the stuck up light skin stereotype or the stuck up mixed girl stereotype or people that say you think you're better because you have good hair. So that's projection trauma. I've noticed that a lot of you guys here on this channel or a lot of the pretty girls, you guys have a lot of people who are projecting things onto you. Like I remember when I was a little girl, a lot of people used to say like, oh, she thinks she's better or she thinks she's all that or she's gonna be conceited when she grows up. And it's like, I was literally just a child. I knew nothing about being con conceited or being arrogant or anything like that. Um, but I've noticed that a lot of you guys in the Discord have had the same experiences when it comes to your own background. People may project the negative stereotypes that they associate with a pretty girl. They may project that onto you. Another thing I've noticed is that a lot of people, they have kind of this 
pretty and dumb stereotype. They think that because you're pretty, there's no way you can be pretty and incredibly smart. There's no way you can be pretty and incredibly talented. Oh no, you have to have only gotten to where you are because you slept with someone or because of your looks or because someone uh, gave you a connection and that's how you got to where you are. So I've noticed that's another common trauma that a lot of pretty girls have. It's uh, when people underestimate you. And I've noticed that a lot of pretty girls will have this coping mechanism of maybe going out of their way to uh, people please, or maybe they'll go out of their way to be more talented than other people and more intelligent than other people. But the more you do that, the more people come against you. I've noticed that this happens with women like uh, in politics. I've noticed that anytime a, an attractive woman runs for office, a lot of people will go out of their way to uh, try to dumb down her intelligence or to try to focus on like what she's wearing or focus on issues that have nothing to do with politics. And they're doing that because she is a conventionally attractive woman. I've seen this happen with so many different people. Uh, I've noticed this in the entertainment industry as well. Anytime a pretty girl makes it to the top or she's like a rising star, people will say, oh, she only got to where she is because of her looks. Like there's no possible way that she could actually be good at rapping. There's no possible way that she could actually be talented. And it's like, how come when you're pretty, you are required to be the most talented, the most intelligent person ever in order to be successful, but if you are mid-level or ugly, then it's like, you know, people celebrate you. But I've noticed that when you're pretty, people don't really want you to be successful because it's like, no, you can't be pretty and also be successful because that's just too triggering. That's just too triggering for people's insecurities. Like for example, when I look at uh, the up and coming rapper Ice Spice, I really like her lyrics. I think that she's really talented. I love the beats that she um, has in her music. And I've noticed that a lot of people say like, oh, she, she only made it to where she is because of her looks or because she has a lighter complexion. And it's like, okay, why does I Spice have to be the most talented rapper of all time just so she can make it in Hollywood? Like, you don't have to be the best person who ever existed and the most skilled person of all time in order to be successful at something. You just have to be proficient at that thing. I noticed that people said the same thing about Rihanna. They were like, oh, she only made it that far because of how she looks, or she only made it that far because she's light-skinned. And it's like, okay, once again, does Rihanna have to be the best singer of all time in order to have a bop? Does she have to be the greatest artist of all time in order to have a successful career? No, she doesn't. So why is it that people automatically put these extremely high unattainable standards on a beautiful person? Well, that's projection trauma. So because they already pedestalize your beauty, they hold you to a higher standard in every other area. So it's like, okay, if you're really beautiful, but you're not that smart, or like your, your intelligence and your talent doesn't measure up, to your beauty, then you are somehow invalidated in their eyes. Basically, people will punish the pretty girl for not being perfect in every other area. So I've noticed the same thing happens with pretty girls and their personalities. So let's say you're really pretty and you have some personality setbacks, like maybe you're very introverted and quiet, or maybe you are a little bit more assertive and you like to stand your ground. A lot of people will They'll be like, oh, well, she's such a bitch, or oh my god, she's so stuck up. But if an ugly girl is assertive, or she stands up for herself, no one cares. But when you're pretty, suddenly it's a huge deal, and you need to be shut down, and you need to be beat up outside of the schoolyard, and you need to be humbled. Well, why is that? That's projection drama. So people will magnify your flaws, and they will project their stereotypes about pretty girls onto you. And Nicki Minaj actually comes to mind when I think about this because Nicki Minaj, uh, when she raps in her music, she's very like boisterous, kind of like bragging about herself, just like how other rappers do. You know, a part of hip hop music is you kind of like brag about your achievements and you brag about how you're like a baddie and all that stuff. So I've noticed that Nicki Minaj does that, Ice Spice does that, Cardi B does that. Most, most rappers do that in general, male or female. But it's only a problem when Nicki Minaj and Ice Spice and all of the conventionally attractive rappers do that. It's not a problem if someone who is quote unquote ugly or quote unquote average like Lizzo, it's not a problem if someone like that does it. It's not a problem if someone like Lizzo does it. In fact, that's empowering to see Lizzo do something like that. You know why? Because deep down inside, 
people view Lizzo as not being as attractive as other women. And by the way, when I use terms like pretty and ugly and average, I'm not trying to uh, make it personal against anyone. I'm just trying to use these terms because these are terms that people understand. Okay, pretty, ugly, average. You're thinking it, I'm just saying it, all right? So if you're ugly or mediocre, you are allowed to be cocky. You're allowed to brag about yourself. You're allowed to be confident because that's empowering. But if you're pretty and confident, oh no, that's not empowering. That's too triggering to other people's insecurities. And so once again, back onto that projection trauma. People will project that stuck up pretty girl stereotype onto you and then they will try to go out of their way to humble you by hitting you with aesthetic trauma, which is when they call out anything about you that doesn't fit the beauty standard. So for example, with Ice Spice's hair, she wears like her natural curly afro, or she wears an afro wig, I'm not sure. She wears like this curly red afro wig, and then people call that out and say it's ugly. And it's like, if I were to call out an unambiguous black woman's natural curly afro, or her natural 4C afro, I would be called all kinds of texturous. But it's okay for you to call out Ice Spice's afro and to call that ugly. It's okay for you to call out Blue Ivy's hair and to call that ugly. It's okay for you to call out Doja Cat's afro and to call that ugly. And to say that you're glad Doja Cat shaved her head because her hair looked bad and she was going to damage it with wigs. Oh, it's okay for you to call those things out. You know why? Because deep down inside, you view those women as being more conventionally attractive. And so therefore, you think it's okay to drag those women down. Projection trauma. Another common trauma that pretty girls go through is sabotage. This is when people give you bad advice on purpose. This is when people don't give you the information that you need to succeed. This is when people watch you fail. This is when people say that uh, you're a six when you're really a 10. You know, these are the people who go out of their way to make sure that you do not become more successful than them. A good example I can think of when it comes to sabotage is that scene in Legally Blonde where Elle Woods walks into Harvard University and she's like, you know, looking all feminine and cute and then everybody's just looking at her like other girls are giving her dirty looks and they're kind of like, they automatically want to sabotage her because they don't want her to be both beautiful and successful. That's just too triggering for their own insecurities. That just brings out their own inferiority complexes too much. And... These are the type of people who have the mindset of your success takes away from mine. Your beauty takes away from mine. Any attention that she gets, that's attention that I'm not getting. Okay, so these are people who have very infantile mindsets. These are people who are not emotionally developed. They are not self-actualized. Um, they have not really leveled up to their highest potential. And so they don't want to see you level up because you're already above them in their mind. You're already prettier than them, so you can't be richer than them too. You can't be prettier than them and richer than them and more popular than them and more successful than them and more famous than them and have a better boyfriend than them. No, that's just way too triggering. Sabotage. That is called sabotage trauma. I've also seen this same scenario happen with a lot of women's families. So a lot of you guys in the Discord, you've talked about how some of your own family members have given you bad advice or maybe they were extra mean to you because they felt like, you know, you were being pedestalized by other people. I remember seeing this one unambiguous divestment YouTuber talking about how she doesn't allow other family members to compliment her biracial daughters because she doesn't want them to uh, be pedestalized. So basically, in a jealous woman's mind, compliments equals pedestalization. So if you're already pretty, other people, they don't want you to receive, they don't want you to receive compliments because that means that you are being pedestalized. However, if you're not attractive and people compliment you, oh, that's just normal. So like you can compliment the ugly girl, you can compliment the mediocre girl, but you better not compliment the pretty girl. You know why? Because that's pedestalizing. Sabotage. This is the sabotaging trauma. Okay, so these are people who they don't want to see you getting complimented. They don't want you to have the halo effect. So I've talked about the halo effect in my other dark femininity video. This is a tendency for people to naturally want to validate you. Um, people naturally want to trust you more because maybe you are very attractive. I've noticed that when it comes to pretty girls, the halo effect only works on men 
like people who are sexually attracted to you or non-jealous women. That's when the halo effect works. You will have the opposite effect around jealous women, and there is a small sect of men. They are often called incels. These are the men who are mad that they can't have a woman like you, and so they will naturally be rude to you. So these are what I would call jealous men. These are the men who are literally jealous of the attention that you receive from the opposite sex. They are men that are jealous of the sexual attention you get. They're, they're men that are jealous of the romantic attention you get. They're jealous of your opportunities. Uh, same thing goes for women. But let's talk about some of the common coping mechanisms of beautiful women. Number one, relationships. There is always a man willing to swoop in and save you. Have you ever noticed that as a pretty girl? A lot of pretty girls are targets of narcissistic men, and a lot of pretty girls have men, you know, constantly begging to sleep with you or begging to be in a relationship with you. And so for some pretty girls who are in very vulnerable situations, relationships can be a coping mechanism. So let's say you are a pretty girl and you live in a house where your family is doing the sabotage trauma. So they're giving you bad advice on purpose, they're not giving you information you need, uh, they want to see you fail. Let's say your family members are abusive and then some man comes in and he says, hey, you know, I can pay all of your bills, you can just come and live with me. For a lot of beautiful women, these types of relationships will be a coping mechanism. And I noticed that this is more common in very young women or women who come from underprivileged backgrounds and toxic families. This is true for myself as well, so I'm not like looking down on anyone. Um, so I've noticed that that's a common coping mechanism of a beautiful woman. Another common coping mechanism of a pretty girl is leveling up. Leveling up so you can level out of toxic circles. And this actually isn't a bad one. Um, this is a healthy coping mechanism, I think, or I think it can be very healthy. So these are the women like Shira Seven, you know, these these talking points about how, you know, if you just, if you get enough money or if you get enough status or if you move to a better neighborhood or if you get away from all of these people, then you won't have to deal with sexual traumas and aesthetic trauma and projection trauma and sabotage because you've leveled up and you've leveled out of those circles. So I do agree with this, but I think that the only problem is that um, there could be jealous people anywhere. There are toxic people in every circle. So there are toxic people in the suburbs. There are toxic people who are rich. There are toxic people who are also beautiful. Be aware of that. That's a, that's a common coping mechanism for pretty women is leveling up and then also relationships. Another common coping mechanism of a beautiful woman is dumbing down your beauty. I've seen lots of women in my discord and on this channel talk about shaving their heads or you know starting to wear these crazy eclectic outfits so so that they don't stand out or so they don't look as pretty and this is to make themselves less threatening to other women. They're tired of all of the projection trauma. They're tired of jealous women saying, oh, well, you look manly, or you have a big nose, or you have a weird shaped head. So eventually these types of women who are naturally pretty, they'll just say, you know what, F it. Like, I guess I do have a big head. I guess I do look manly. So why don't I just embrace it and I'll just dress manly or I'll just shave my head. And that way nobody else can call out my aesthetic flaws because I am embracing and flaunting these aesthetic flaws. So that's a common coping mechanism. I've seen this a lot in Hollywood as well. Um, another common coping mechanism I've seen with beautiful women is uh, plastic surgery. So once again, I've noticed that people will, they will place that aesthetic trauma on you. So they'll compare you to another beautiful woman and they'll, and they'll say, oh, this other girl, she's prettier than you because she's lighter or because she looks more white or because she has blue eyes and you have brown eyes or, oh, this other woman's skinnier than you or, oh, her hair is uh, more like a white girl's hair. She has straight hair. You have nappy hair. You know, so I've seen some beautiful women go out and get plastic surgery as a coping mechanism. And this is because, once again, they're tired of the aesthetic trauma that's being placed on them. They're tired of people constantly calling out like, oh, you have nappy hair. Oh, Doja Cat, you have no edges. Oh my God. So then Doja Cat, she finally just shaves her head. You know what I mean? Like these people, they're tired of others constantly calling out their flaws. And so they're like, you know what? 
I'm just going to get rid of this flaw or I'm going to shave my head or I'm going to embrace and flaunt this flaw and, and I will now have kind of this eclectic look and I will dumb down my beauty or I won't be defined by my, be by my beauty because if you're not defined by your beauty, then, then other people can't traumatize you or lower your self-esteem in that area. Another common coping mechanism of a beautiful woman is people-pleasing. This is something that I myself has, have struggled with too. Um, so this is when you do everything in your power to be as nice as possible to everyone. You're bending over backwards. You're jumping through hoops. You are jumping through rings of fire for other people. I mean, you are literally setting yourself on fire in order to keep other people warm. So these are the women who allow people to abuse them, you allow people to talk to you crazy, you allow people to call you names or make fun of you, and you just keep taking it and taking it and taking it because you're hoping that by doing this, you're showing that you're humble. You're hoping that by taking the abuse, you're showing others that, hey, I'm not stuck up. I don't think I'm better than you. People pleasing. Common coping mechanism of a beautiful woman. Another coping mechanism of pretty girls. Um, the fear of success. I've noticed that some pretty girls, they like to stay low key because if you are pretty and you're also in the spotlight or you have a lot of eyes on you, you're opening yourself up to more traumas. You're opening yourself up to more criticism. You're opening yourself up for people to talk crap about you. And not everybody wants to deal with that shit. A lot of women will say, I don't need to be the best. I don't, I don't even need to be mediocre. I will just stay over here in my corner and kind of isolate myself as much as possible so that nobody talks crap about me. So to recap, the top traumas of a pretty girl are betrayal trauma, sexual trauma, aesthetic trauma, that's people calling out your physical flaws, uh, saying comments like, oh, you're not that light-skinned. It's because they associate light skin with beauty. So by saying you're not that light-skinned, they're trying to say you're not that beautiful. Uh, projection trauma, projecting their stereotypes onto you, saying, oh, you're acting mixed or you're acting light-skinned, you're acting stuck up. Sabotage trauma, not giving you the information or resources you need to succeed. And then the common coping mechanisms of pretty girls. Relationships, leveling up, dumbing down your beauty, people pleasing, or fear of success. So can you relate to any of these things as a pretty girl? Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.